Let's review this Anderson connector. It's an SB50, and these are rated. The terminals are up to 120 amps. Uh, common applications are usually, you know, 50 to 60 amps used for, let's say, a battery charger uh, hookup on the back for charging in between rounds is a common use. Um, charging up or, or heating up a nitrous bottle with a, a with a heater. These work great for those applications. They are plastic, and there is not an A and a B side. They are both the same. So. Um, there's no male, female. All the terminals are same for both sides. So you'll see that it does is marked positive and negative on both sides. So you'll uh, you'll hook up your your power and ground uh, accordingly, and the one just flips over and they connect like this once the terminals are in. This is an assembled one right here, and terminal options come for a 10 to 12 gauge size or for a six gauge size. So you can, uh, you have a few options there for power and ground cables to run into these. Uh, definitely a useful tool and we'll go through how to crimp and assemble the connector. Uh, for this project here, we're gonna use a 10 gauge wire. It's gonna be used as a battery charger lug on the back. Just a way to quickly connect a battery charger uh, for charging in between rounds. We're gonna go ahead and use our hydraulic crimpers uh, handheld hydraulic crimpers. Uh, in this case, we found that the 10, the size 10 here fits pretty good. A lot of times these are in millimeter squared. It just happens to, so happens to be a 10. And we've kind of done that for some testing of different things. So you slide your, strip your wire, slide it in, and we'll give you a good crimp. Crimp it all the way down. Okay, should be good. All right, there you can see a good crimp all the way around. This is a hex shape die that we're using. Works out really good. Got a good solid crimp. All right, let's go ahead and put this terminal in. You can see this connector here. It's got a little metal tab inside there. This hook shape, I'm gonna show it this way, is gonna slide in and clip up over that tab. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, it can be a little bit of a a wiggle to try and get her in there and, and get to, to seat in. But this can go up to a six gauge wire. This is currently a 10 gauge wire that we've got crimped in here. So we'll kind of push it in. You can see it's pushing in from the back and you're gonna keep pushing it in. You can see that, there we go. See it here, clipped in. So that clipped up over the top of that and that's seated in. Now we can go ahead and put the other side in. Okay, now let's go ahead and get the black one in. And again, you just you just kind of strip the wire back to where you have enough of the strands, all the way full depth into the terminal, and a little just a little bit sticking out right there. Make sure you have full connection. We're gonna go ahead and put this in the same exact way. And again, you've got your positive, your negative. You can also see it on the other side, positive and negative up here. All right, let's go ahead and get that put in. Gonna see there. See if, there we go. Clips in. Okay, so now we have one side of the connector terminated. Luckily, the other side is exactly the same. All right, so here we go with two. I get two of these connectors. Again, they are exactly the same. You've got two mounting holes in each each one to go ahead and fasten that to something if you need to. And when you turn it around, turn one upside down. They're gonna go together and clip together. Again, these are more preferred for something when the car is stationary, like a battery charger, nitrous bottle. Just because it doesn't have a typical latch, it only has the interference of these two lugs going together. And it's kind of an interesting way of doing it. Um, essentially, you just have two of these terminals. And when they go into the connector, they ride up over the top of each other and they connect like that. So that's how they're connected. Good tool, uh, something to, to use on your builds. Comes in real handy. Last but not least, if you wanna remove the wire and terminal out of the connector, doesn't even take a special tool, just like a little screwdriver or something. Usually you can just depress that little tab that is clipped over, that little sheet metal tab and once you depress that with a little screwdriver, you're just basically pushing down like so on the tab that's in there, and that'll release it. Pull that out, 
and you're good to go. Hope this helped. If you have any questions, give us a call, shoot us a message.